Just incredible. But let's go on to the next young man who lost his faith, had his faith in God's Word destroyed by his seminary education, and now he is a Muslim. And you aren't going to believe where this guy was educated at. Check this one out. So I, I, I was in a frenzy, and I started telling my friend, and he realized that I was in a, a Christian crisis, as to say. You know, I was in real crisis. So he took me to, um, back to the, the scholars at Bob Jones, and he also got me in touch with some, some uh, Bible scholars at the Moody Institute in Chicago, um, which is one of the biggest evangelical schools in this, in this country, the Moody Institute, um, which is where I plan to perhaps do my, my graduate studies after Bob Jones. And they came together and they had, you know, a, an intervention as to say, you know, they, they tried putting, they, they, they began to think, because I started to believe that this book cannot be from God. It cannot be from God because there's too much in it that does not make sense. There's, and then I also started to notice the contradictions of the texts. Started reading the text, I started to realize that not only there are contradictions in what the text says, which there are thousands of them, um, and for sake of time, there's no need to go through them. If you want to know them, there are many books out there that will show you them. Books written by non-Muslims, to say. I ended up talking to one guy, one guy at Bob Jones University, and I don't want to give out his name because he will probably not be very happy with me saying that he is the person who wrecked my faith in Christianity. <laughs> and <clears throat> he would not be very pleased if I were to give out his name and accredit that to him because he's probably still a, a um, professor at Bob Jones. But he sat me down and he said, you know what, Brother Joshua, you're seeing all these things that are happening, you know, mistakes, things that don't make sense, you know, things that don't look right. And he said, you're going to see it and you're going to continue to see it if you continue to read this book. He said, because this book was written by man's hands. And anything that has been touched by man's hands will have fingerprints still left on it. He said, so what happened was, when all these things you see wrong is that somebody probably just made a mistake. He said the, the copy of the copy of the copy, the scribe who copied this person, who person, this, 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 so on and so forth, probably one of them made a mistake and somebody copied his mistake and made his own mistake and then that person compounded the other person's mistake and maybe somebody came back and corrected one person's mistake and then added his own. He said, so that's probably what happened and you have the final product of all of that. And that just I had to sit down and actually take that for a second because I was fighting inside myself to try to keep this book at the status that it has always been in my home, the inerrant Word of God. This is how I was taught, inerrant Word of God, Word of God without error, revealed by divine inspiration through men and transcribed onto paper. And I began to realize that this was not the case. So needless to say, and for the sake of time, I left Christianity altogether. The great Bob Jones University has destroyed thousands of Christian young men. I've talked to a couple of them myself, so don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I've talked to them. I've heard the personal experiences. I talked to a pastor of a Baptist church the one time who said that he still has his old King James Bible that he took with him when he went to Bob Jones University and when he came out when he graduated that thing was filled with notes saying this verse shouldn't be in there, that word is mistranslated, this verse shouldn't be there, this chapter shouldn't be there, this is actually in question, this is probably added. And some older Christian man came to him and got a hold of him and showed him the Bible version issue and told him if you want any kind of spiritual power at all in your life you are going to have to read and believe that King James Bible. And he showed him the error of the Alexandrian school of thought and praise God he quit this school of thought over here. And I knew another guy, I actually was able to teach the Bible version issue at a church at one point and there was another graduate of Bob Jones University there and he was rolling his eyes and mad and huffing and puffing the whole way through the thing for about, a, well I shouldn't say the whole way, but for about a half hour. And then when the facts really started getting through to him he started realizing, uh oh, I've been deceived. And I had a whole stack of books there on the Bible version issue, some of these back here. And he said, can I borrow those please? And that guy took them home. He read all those books in like a week, <laughs> you know, converted over to being a, a, at least understanding that this is wrong, okay? And I've, there are many, many, many more 
preachers that I have heard of that come out of Bob Jones University attacking and denying this book. And yet they preach from it. See, you can make a living from preaching from it. Just don't believe it. You know, that's Ruckmanism. You know, when you, when you believe it. Absolutely ridiculous. But that's what happens when you are educated against the King James Bible. And let me just say something else here before I continue. One of the reasons why these two men have converted over to Islam is because Islam is smart enough to have one book, the Quran. Okay, and this is not a holy book, okay, this is an unholy book. Uh, a lot of ridiculous nonsense in here, which I'll show you in just a, a minute or two. But the point is, they aren't going to have multiple versions. A version for the feminists. You know, you know yeah, right. <laughs> among among uh, Islam, they'll have a feminist Bible. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. And, of course, I don't defend what the way they treat women and everything, obviously, is ridiculous. But the point is, at least they're smart enough to only have one English translation. Just incredible. But if you want to find out more on Islam and how it is just such a ridiculous system, how Muhammad was a pervert, how he was, you know, just horrible things that that guy did. And some of the things he taught were just incredible. I mean, just ridiculous. Uh, right here, Muhammad's um, Believe It or Not by Abdullah Aziz. And you can actually read things in here. It's illustrated, you know, it's comic book format. But you read it. And you think, there's no way. And I actually went and I got a, a copy of the Quran so I could look up some of this stuff and you know, because I thought, there's no way that they actually would teach that. But then you actually get the thing and you read it and you go, wow, they actually do teach that. So, um, very, very good. Get a copy of that. I'll give links for this down in the description area. But now let's move on to the next section. One more thing on this subject of Islam and their, their discussion now, they're starting to pick up on this whole new version thing over here. Uh, there's a great article. I'm going to give a link to it down in the description area. And you can go there and you can read it. And you can see how a lot of the Muslims are now starting to pick up the writings of Kurt Aland and, and some of these guys, Bruce Metzger, these destructive Bible critics. And the Muslims are starting to pick up on those readings now, or those writings, and they're saying, look, these great Christian scholars are actually saying that the Bible's imperfect, that the Bible's just a man-made book, and that only the original writings, only the original autographs were the divinely inspired Word of God. The Islamic world is now picking up on that and using it against Christianity and using it to blaspheme the Word of God. I can't cover this whole thing in this video, but you can go there and you can read all the details of how the Islamic world is now attacking Christianity because of the new versions. So make sure to read the article. All right, one of the most common practices in criminology, when you are when there's a crime committed and you go there as a detective or whatever and you want to solve this crime, you find somebody murdered or something, and you want to find out who did it okay, is you have to look at motive. That's one of the most important things. Who would have benefited from this crime? Now, let's be open-minded here. If you're a new versionist, just go along with it for a minute. I know that's hard for you to do, but who would benefit from replacing this book? Okay, for a long time, this was the only Bible used by professing Christianity, okay? And there were, you know, the Dewey Reams was available actually before the King James Version, the Dewey Reams came out. But for a couple hundred years, this was the book. And if you look at Christianity, the strength of Christianity in those years, there was no country on the planet that didn't have Christian missionaries going into it. And they were all carrying King James Bibles. Okay, the greatest works ever completed for the Lord were all done with this book. Okay, and everything's been falling apart ever since this garbage over here came out. So let's just say for a minute that there was a crime committed, that this book here was attacked by this over here. Now, who would benefit from that? Who could possibly be behind these new versions? Well, if you 
actually watch my Real Bible Version Issue Exposed video. It's available here on YouTube. Go to my channel and go to the playlist and you can watch the whole thing. It won't cost you a cent. If you watch it, I kind of prove, not kind of, I do prove who is behind the new versions. I made reference to it earlier. But I'm going to show you from their own writings, the writings of Jesuit fathers of the Catholic Church. I'm going to show you from their own writings exactly who benefits from this over here. So let's take a look at this. Okay, here we have the Church Teaches, Documents of the Church in English Translation by Jesuit Fathers of St. Mary's College. All right, let me zoom in here. We're going to go to page 59. Now let me zoom in a little bit more so you can really kind of make this out. This is important to get. The place of textual criticism, which I've been discussing. In our, in our times, it is praiseworthy to use the art known as textual criticism in editing secular writings. And this art finds its most proper use when exercised on the sacred writings. For these writings deserve the respect due to the divine word. The purpose of this act is to restore the original text as perfectly as possible to remove the corruptions which the fallibility of copyists has caused, and as far as it can, to do away with the glosses and omissions, the inversions and repetitions of words, and all the other kinds of mistakes that invariably slipped into, the, into text handed down through many, many centuries, and all should well realize that this lengthy task is necessary to understand correctly the divinely inspired texts. This task is demanded of us by love, since we should certainly be grateful to the providence of God who from his throne of majesty has given these writings to his children. Now I'm going to show you another reason here. Here on page 93 it says, Christ's church is not a society of equals as if all the faithful in it had the same rights, but it is a society in which not all are equal. Now of course you see the hypocrisy right away of that statement about textual criticism that they are, you know, really trying to find and restore the original writings and stuff. Yeah, uh -huh. why would they use this minority text if they're concerned about restoring and really, you know, let's really look at the different Greek texts and everything. Yeah, they're using the poorest text that is out there. Okay, less than 5% of the manuscripts. You want to find the real ones, you go over here to the Receptus readings. Okay, very poor argument. 